Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the goofy start. Um, I've had the website open for about 10 and only one person had logged in and I couldn't figure out why. And then Linda called and said that she couldn't get in. So anyway, I shut it down and now we're, looks like everybody. Um, anyway, so sorry for that. Um, Paul, we're but, getting an echo. An echo? Yes. I got my headset on. Let me take them out and start over again. This, oh, I know what it is. Did it go away now? Yes. Thank okay. you. I was still connected to you on the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Sorry for the um, goofy start this morning. This session is uh, is really geared to uh, folks that are relatively new um, in using control or being exposed to control. So it's it's on the basic uh, basic side intentionally. And what we're going to do today is uh, just the simple things of logging in and logging out of control. We'll review and discuss the uh, the home screen. Um, spend quite a bit of time uh, on the third point, which is using what we refer to as explore, and that's how you're going to find, you know, companies or orders or estimates or other things. Spend a little, you know, some of the user options that are available that you can customize for yourself. Talk a little bit about the activity manager, and that's kind of probably where we'll wrap up the day. And then on Thursday, we'll get in more to the, uh, you know, some of the basic um, how-to uses uh, by adding the company and adding contacts and reviewing that process. Uh, we'll create an order or an estimate and walk through that process uh, and then uh, convert that to an order and then spend a fair amount of time talking about an important topic, which is uh, the statuses, uh, which represents the life cycle, both of estimates um, and touch briefly on uh, uh, handling of payments and uh, how you can kind of finish up the day talking about the quick products and how you can set those to suit what your preferences are for the products that you're going to use, um, you know, the most frequently. I'm going to now switch over to control and uh, we'll get started. Um, I'll pause uh, periodically as we're going through so that there'll be ample um, ample time to, um, you know, to ask questions. Now, what I'm gonna do, I wanna start with the login process. So I'm gonna temporarily log out so that you can see what the login process looks like. This is a little bit different uh, on my system than what you will likely see at your end uh, because I'm operating in a cloud environment. Normally, you're going to see the login name and the password. You would uh, enter your name and then the password and say, OK, and you're, you're ready to go. Now, I'm in the cloud, so I'm just simply going to say OK, and then it's going to bring me back into the, um, into the system. Some comments about passwords are important. They have to be at least eight characters in length. Uh, they have to contain at least one uppercase letter and at least one numeric letter. Uh, it used to be that you were required to change that periodically, and I think that uh, requirement is, uh, has changed. Um, there are some features that are important um, that you may or may not elect to use. Um, one is referred to as auto lock out, and the other one is auto log off. They're very similar, um, in the, but they're optional to uh, you know to use. If the system is idle for a certain period of time, and you are using the lock out feature, then it will lock the screen so that you would have to re, uh, put your password back in. Similarly, if you're using the, lo the log off and the system has been idle, idle for a certain period of time, generally people who use that do it for 10 minutes, then it would log you completely out. 
Now, there may be some things where you can't, uh, where the system won't do that. If you've got an estimate or an order that's open and hasn't been saved, then it uh, it won't do either of those uh, either of those tasks. And we'll show you in just a little bit how you can decide yes or no, whether or not you're going to use though either or both or neither to, uh, of those two features. So again, just <clears throat> quickly to summarize, the password has to be uh, eight characters, has to have one capital, and it has to have at least one numeric letter. If you're brand new, generally your uh, supervisor or uh, someone administrative rights is going to create your record in, in control, and you will be assigned a user ID, and then they will give you a, uh, the, a password to use for the first time. And then the system would have been set up so that you would have to change that password the first time that you that you log in. So use the temporary one first, and then change it at point on. You would use um, you would use the one that you chose. Now what we're looking at now um, is referred to as a home screen, and there are a lot of different um, things that we will cover here. I'm going to start by coming across the top row and the second row, and then I'll comment on the right-hand margin. That's called the action toolbar. And then we'll spend some time talking about the, the stuff in the middle here, and those are referred to as, as dashboards. So the top two rows are referred to as the taskbar. The, the second one, the second row where you see the icons, those represent probably the ones that you're going to use the most frequently. Um, but each of these, if you go up here to the top and then click on file, then you will have additional choices where you could log out uh, or close down. You could lock the screen. You could change the password and things of that nature. So each of these have different pull downs that you can choose. Okay. Now notice the little diamond here. When I select it, it brings up a list. And all of the items that have a green uh, circle with a check mark in it, I have indicated that I want to see on my, on my screen when I log in. So if you're not doing anything related to sales and marketing, then just simply remove the check mark and then it disappears from the list, okay? So if you're not doing anything with the, the, or you're not involved in the production, likewise. So it's that little diamond in the check or, or not check, those really are intended to help you streamline the uh, system so that it, maybe use the word not, uh, declutters all the things that you have to see and, and be uh, sensitive to. Now the second row um, is very similar, but again, as I said, it represents the more frequent things. So here you can log out. Here's where you would choose a different dashboard, and there's a long list of those. I'll come back to those in a minute. In a minute, if you're going to do something new such as adding a new company or a new order or an estimate. That's what the new one is. Explore is how you can find things. We'll spend quite a bit of time on it. Talking about the activity manager, using the time clock to lock clock yourself in and out at the beginning of the day or around lunchtime or at the end of the day. And then depending on how your system is being utilized, uh, you can also use that function to log in and out of, of jobs. Payment handling payments, quick reports, that's a, uh, an operation that is uh, pretty much geared to whoever's going to be doing a, a business closeout at the end of the day, and then printing, marketing, support, history. And uh, I want to call talk a little bit about the support button. I think this is an important one <clears throat> and potentially one that would be quite uh, valuable. <clears throat> During the course of using the system, there may be things that come up right or you need some help on. 
So rather than make a phone call to the tech support line, um, it's probably going to be easier and preferable for you <clears throat> to use the support um, item here <clears throat> where you can enter the information that you need. And then when you're done, now what that does is puts the uh, <clears throat> puts the your your inquiry or your ticket into a queue so that there has to be no human interaction to take down what kind of help you you need that's going to be uh, monitored when when the tech support staff and they will get back to you and reach out when uh, when your 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 ticket bubbles up to the top you can use this use this to kind of refresh and keep track of things. You can um, stop one and so on. So I think that's a, a, a very helpful um, and one that I would strongly encourage you to use. Uh, the next one I want to draw to your attention is the history. There'll be many, many times during the course of your use of control that you're going to get interrupted. Um, and sometimes it's, uh, it, it may can't have difficulty remembering what in the world it was that you were working on last. Well, the system kind of keeps track of what, what's been going on. So it keeps a list of all of the recent history of things that I've been, that I've been doing, okay? So if I have closed down, I've disappeared for a while, and I can't remember what I wanted was doing, I could come back in and say, oh yeah, I was working on that, uh, on that particular order for this particular company. Or I was working on an estimate or I was working, using the payment entry function. So it's just a quick way to get back to where you were, okay? The items up here at the top, <clears throat> that's called pinning. And so if you have one uh, particular things that you always want to have appear, in the history thing, you can pin that item and then it will appear at the top. Exiting the system, you can either exit from the taskbar here or you can come over to file and, uh, and close out there. I tend to use this one more. Now, the downward arrow here is the same kind of concept as what we just talked about on the top row of the taskbar. If there are things in there that you're not going to need for your day-to-day -day use, just remove the check mark, and then that will streamline the appearance of that um, of the uh, of that taskbar. Um, the action toolbar over here on the right. Let me open up a um, uh, an order so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. What appears in the action toolbar varies depending on what it is that you're doing or what what the estimate might be or the order might be or explore. Um, whatever it is, whatever function you're using is going to influence what you do or don't see in the action toolbar. Common things for orders and common things for estimates is voiding, printing, um, clocking into a job, if you need to edit it. Now, you, some of the things that are here, notice are grayed out, and that means that you can't do it, okay? So for example, to save, you first have to have been uh, either in a brand new one and you're saving it for the first time, or you have opened up an order and edited it, Say I want to edit it, um, and now you can save it when you're done. I'm going to cancel it because I don't have to change the date. And now it opens back up, and you can uh, in a print or you can clone it and make uh, and make a new one. So the action toolbar is is important. You're going to use it all the time. But what appears or doesn't appear is going to differ um, depending on what it is that you're that you're looking at and working on. Now back to, <clears throat> to here, this from the blue bar down in this area, that's referred to as a dashboard. This happens to be 
the default dashboard. It's the one that they was, was selected at the time that my system was configured. Now, if you're involved in other aspects of the business and how you use it, you can choose existing other dashboards. So here's two or three that are related to the, uh, to the accounting tasks. Here's a couple that are related to uh, marketing or activity, managing activities, artwork, management, uh, marketing again. Uh, so if you're involved in handling receivables, um, then this might be a meaningful dashboard to have on the system. Over here on the left, it gives you a list of the current of the current companies that have outstanding balances. So whichever one is highlighted, then you're seeing the list of, uh, of open invoices that have a balance due. See the calendar, see other little shortcuts, all of these items with the, with the dark blue uh, heading, those are called instruments and those are predefined. So the, the, the beauty of, the, of these is that you can, uh, you can edit, <clears throat> excuse me, you can edit existing dashboards, uh, rearrange how they look, or delete some instruments if you don't want them, and then either create a new dashboard when you save it, or just modify the existing one. So this is one that would be helpful for uh, um, if you're involved in um, accounts receivable, um, if you're involved in the use of the activity manager, this is a different one. It just shows you the calendar, um, different calendars down here for employees and equipment, um, and then what is what's active over here. Okay. Now the actual process of creating dashboards, um, I'm not going to get into that. It's a it's a it's a topic in and by itself, but just be aware that you can change the dashboard to your, your preference by choosing a different one. And then when we get into talking about the user constants, or not user constants, but user options, um, you'll see how you can change your profile to choose the dashboard that you want to have um, prevalent, or, you know, load when you, when you log in. <clears throat> So the key takeaways here are you got the two, ta uh, two uh, taskbar items up here. You got the action toolbar and over in here. You got a dashboard and you can change the dashboard setting in the, in the user options. I'm gonna pause here to see if we have some questions <clears throat> before I jump into using the, the Explorer function. No questions, Paul. All right, just a second. <clears throat> so, to begin to define things, um, you're either going to use the Explorer function up here off of the taskbar, or you could um, uh, use the little magnifying glass here from the home screen. I can almost guarantee that it's going to be easier and more convenient for you to use the, uh, the taskbar. So, you can either choose the, uh, the magnifying glass. And then it brings down a list of the 14 or so different kinds of uh, things that you can search for. The more common ones are going to be to search for an order, an estimate, uh, a company, perhaps a contact, and many, many others. Okay. So the ones that I'm going to focus on. Are the uh, are the company's estimates and orders, and then we'll look a little bit at the uh, at contacts and payment history stuff as well. So if I first let's start off with a company. <clears throat> All of the searches that you're going to do, they have two common <clears throat> attributes, and one of those are cr uh, search criteria, and the other one. Uh, is referred to as display filters. Now, I'm going to open up another one so we can kind of see um, the differences. 
So here we're doing one for the first one was exploring for an or a company. And these are the uh, search criteria that you can enter in and then what the display filter choices are. <clears throat> Exploring for an order still has the search criteria, but now it's geared to an order and what some of the options are for entering the search criteria that you want. The filters for orders and estimates are geared to the statuses. Okay, so the status of an order is going to begin its life and work in process <clears throat> when the work is done and it's ready to be delivered or picked up or shipped or installed. Um, it would be changed to built. Sale says that the customer has taken possession of the goods. And if it stays in a sale status, it says that they have not paid the invoice in full. So it represents where this particular order is in its life cycle. And then of course, you can always choose a specific time range. Uh, this quarter, this week, this month, today, next week, uh, last week, a whole bunch of different choices. And then for historical stuff, uh, things that are closed or orders that you have avoided. Now, if we change this one to estimate, <clears throat> they look very, very similar to each other. The criteria is a little bit different. The filters, again, are based on the <clears throat> on estimate statuses, and the life cycle of an estimate begins its life in pending. Hopefully, it will end its life as converted, but you may have to elect to mark one as either lost or simply voiding it. And then uh, you can, again, you can choose whatever <clears throat> whatever time frame that you are interested in. So let's go back to company. So the way you would do a search is that you would put, probably search by the company name, but you could search for a first name and a last name or combinations of those. So I'm just going to type in the letter um, A, and then I'm going to pause. So that when you enter the, each successive character, the system begins the search process by narrowing down the results, okay? So let's get rid of the A, and if I put in a C, it's gonna do the same thing. Um, I don't have any with multiple characters uh, beginning, but you can see the process that if you had multiple letters or, or companies that started with A or B or C, the further you type in the, uh, the name of the company, the search results over here on the right are going to continuously and frequently um, narrow down. So if you want to search for a specific company, then you can begin to further narrow down other attributes of what you want to see. So if I wanted to search for a particular company, uh, maybe that Sear skills, and I wanted to see those that have estimates, that one doesn't have any, okay? If I wanted to see as orders, I know I have orders for these. Let's start from scratch. Okay, what it's telling me is that I don't have, um, there we go. <clears throat> this one didn't have estimates, but it did have an order, okay? So you can narrow down the search. 
on a on estimate or on on a, um, the, on a company. A client means that the company has either a um, and either has estimates, one or more estimates, or it has one or more orders. Okay. A prospect, on the other hand, is a company that maybe you have entered, and at this point in time does not have either a uh, any estimates or or orders. Vendors are very very much like clients. Think of clients as customers that you're selling goods and services to. A vendor is someone that you're purchasing um, goods or services from. And the company that you put into the, into the database can be both a client and a vendor, okay? If we come back over to the estimates, it works very much the same way. So right now, it's only looking at pending orders that occurred this quarter. If I wanted to look at just the converted estimates, just one. If I wanted to look at both, now it's going to show me both. There's the converted one and the remaining ones for, um, um, so I wanted to look and see if I had any ones that were lost. I marked this one lost, and I marked one deliberately marked voided. The difference between lost and voided is um, they're very, very much the same. Lost, I like to think of as the customer is indicated back to you that they're not going to move forward with the, uh, with the quote that you did for them. Might be because they chose another company. It might be because the price was too high um, or whatever reason. Notice this thing over here called station. For lost and voided, that's where you enter the reason that they decided that you, that you decided to mark it lost or the reason that you marked it voided. Think of that as a station because statuses and stations go hand in hand. The station concept simply is a further delineation of different incremental steps explaining something. So in the case of estimates that are lost or voided, it simply represents the reason that they're not moving forward. If we come over and do that now in the context of uh, uh, pending ones, now the, stat the station even becomes more important. And you can see in the test environment, I'm lazy, okay? The whole idea of stations for estimates is what do you think the likelihood is of this progressing to the point where the customer is going to say, let's, let's move forward. So you can make this one, take it right in, do a right mouse click, come down to say change uh, station in the pending. And maybe it's, you really don't have a whole high uh, expectation, so you may just simply put it into a pending cold status, for station, I mean. Uh, similarly, if you really think that there's high probability that this is going to occur, then you may choose a pending hot, okay? And what that is intended for in the context of, of, stat of estimates is that it helps whoever is overseeing in management, managing the estimate process to continuously stay in contact with that client to move it along. It helps you prioritize, okay? Um, stations in the context of order estimates that you've converted, they simply carry forward the last, um, the last station that was assigned at the, at the pending level. If we come back to the orders, same kind of concept here. I've said, I only want to see what's in WIP. 
Now I only want to see what's in built. So whoever might be following up with customers to say, hey, your, your work is completed for your particular project and it can be, uh, you know, it's ready for you to pick up or, or the, for the, you know, for the final um, dispensation of the, of the project. Sale, if you're involved in looking at um, um, status of sale stuff and particularly want to see what the outstanding balance is, then that would be helpful. Or if you simply need to see when it was marked as a, as a sale, okay? Closed is the same, except that there's no money that's due. The balance has been paid in full. And occasionally you're going to have a situation where um, you, uh, an order just isn't going to happen. Maybe they can't get a permit. Maybe they just, they change their mind. And that would be a case where you would just deliberately mark the order as voided. And uh, all of those have stations uh, as well. Um, let me just look at my notes here just for a second. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, the results over here. Notice this thing called associated number. Um, if you're using uh, control 6.1 or newer up here at the top, then this associated order may or may not be of interest to you. And it is a simple means of associating an order to another order, okay? Notice down here at the bottom on this order number 1017, I have associated it with order number 1014. I have associated order number 1040 also with 1014. There's no magic in what that association may mean or how you might be using that particular, um, you know, that particular feature. But it's a way of grouping similar orders together so that you can quickly see. So if we open up this particular order, 10, 1040, we open it up. Up here in the top left-hand area, you see the order number, and you see that it was associated with um, order number 1014, and it was originated or created by envoy or order number 1038, okay? And 17, 17 and it was associated with 1014. And it, that would imply that this one was created, you know, from scratch, okay? So it wasn't converted from, a, from an, another estimate or from an estimate, nor was it converted uh, or cloned from a, a different estimate or a different, or a, a different order. If you're wanting to make an association, let's just pick this one at, at random. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to the totals tab. And here's where you see the associated order number. Okay. So you have to be in the edit mode. Then you can choose the hourglass and say, I want to associate it with that particular order. And then when I save that, um, now if we go back and look at orders, now you see, whoops, um, Right here is the so one of these two is the one I made an association on. Okay. Any questions? Just stop here. Uh, I've um, covered a lot. There's a 
you can go much, much deeper using the Explorer. You can use it to uh, export data out of, uh, out of control um, using some of the advanced uh, features that um, is a topic on a, a, you know, for a different webinar. So any questions? No questions. All righty. <clears throat> User options. Let's talk about user. Oh, I I want to go back to explore. Um, there's something that I that's important for you to see. <clears throat> I just chose searching for orders. It doesn't. You, know, you can do the same kind of thing that I'm going to talk about, whether it's estimates or orders or companies. The results, what you see over here, you can rearrange what that looks like. You can add columns. You can remove columns to suit your preferences. So for example, if you're not interested in see no reason to use the associated order number, just highlight it with the mouse and flick it up and now it's disappeared. If you wanted to rearrange the uh, um, what it looks like, just drag it over to where you want it to be. To put it back, just whoops, I went one too far. Now, if you want to get a, a particular column and add it back or add something else in, just come up here to the uh, do a right mouse click and come down <clears throat> to column chooser. We'll bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. Just scroll down, and if I wanted to add the associated number again, just highlight it and drag it up and drop it wherever you want it to be. So you can add any of these particular database fields and make them a part of the, um, the, the search results that would be displayed, okay? Uh, let me stop here again, see if we have any questions before I move on to user options. We do have a question, Paul. How do mm -hmm. I locate orders completed through certain dates? Would that be under closed or sales? Um, and this is from Charlie, and I will unmute you. Okay, let me make sure I'm following you. Uh, if we're in searching for orders, it, say the question again, Linda, make sure I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm hearing it right. How do I locate orders completed through certain dates? Like say, I guess, like this year or the last six months. So when you say that be better, I I guess completed means um, closed. The customer has it. The customer has it. Would that be under closed or sales? It depends. It could be either. If the order, if you're looking for order and it's not completed, I'm sorry, not been paid for in full, then you would need to, to select the sale side. If it may have been paid in full, then you would want to search for both. So here you're seeing um, the statuses of both of them, okay? I don't have any for this particular company, you know, that are enclosed. Now, if you want to choose the time range, choose the date here, you can either come down to standard dates and simply choose which one of these you want to choose, okay? So if it was last this year, you may have to refresh. I've got limited data, so we're not gonna see much, you know, much change. But if, if it's an order that is finished and the customer has it, 
and you want to see when it was done, then you would probably need to search both for sale and closed combined. And then choose the time range. Does that did I hit what you were what you were asking about? He doesn't have a microphone, but he said yes, he's got it. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions before we move on? All righty. Now, next thing I'm going to talk about is user options, but I need to talk about um, something else a little bit first because there's a connection between the two. This thing up here called setup in the in the action or in the to uh, toolbar in the top. Um, not everybody can can have access to all of the things that are listed there. You can always get into user options. You probably will not be able, not everybody will be able to get into the machine or the employee setup or system setup and many of these others, okay? Those are gonna be uh, under password, uh, password and privilege control. So whoever is managing the system, for each person that, that can log in and use control, they're going to be sign, assigned what they can and can't do through security privileges. So system setup, you have you all have to have the privileges to get into that. Okay, I'm showing you this because what you see here for all of these different options apply to everyone that's log that can log into control. And there's two specific things that I'm interested in in showing you. One is the company email. This is a global parameter that would apply to everybody. And it simply is saying, how are you going to send outbound emails? And it's going to be through Outlook. That's all you need to tell it. If it's if you're not using Outlook, then you would choose internal. And now you have to be more specific with fill in all of these other parameters from whoever you're uh, you would get from whoever you're you're using for email purposes. Okay, but this applies to everybody. Um, I'm going to say that. Now, if we flip over to user options, this is parameters for your particular preference, okay? So for example, email, if we come down here to the bottom in the first column, this is your personal preference for email, outbound emails. Again, whether you're using Outlook or some internal mechanism. Uh, um, um, so I reflect your preferences. User options is also where you choose what you want to have as the default dashboard for, for yourself. So, so if you wanna change it, you would simply scroll down the list of the different dashboards and choose the one that you want that represents your particular preference. So that's how you customize the dashboard. Third is kind of a, a minor thing. Um, get into the edit mode so you can see it. Remember when we first started today, I mentioned the lock out feature and the log off feature. I've got both of those turned off for my purposes, but if you wanted to uh, activate that one, then put a check mark by it, choose a number of minutes. The default is going to be 10, but you can raise that or lower that if you wanted to use both so that it would lock out or log off. Again, specify the time frame. You want to do the log the log log out, but not the locking, then that one. So it's either or both or neither. 
but it's in the user options is where you set that. Then another little one that's just kind of a um, time saver, so to speak. Down here, I chose to put in the uh, field for date and time. So if you're <clears throat> if you're writing a uh, up an estimate or an order, and in the description area, you want to um, um, put in the date time, then you would just do a Control T and it would enter the date time without you typing it, okay? Just a little a little time saver. Um, any questions on the user options? Not Not a whole lot to it. No questions. All righty. Activity manager, see how we're doing for time. Activity manager. Um, you can get at it from the from the home screen, or you can get at it up here in the taskbar. So I'm going to just click the downward arrow. <clears throat> Here's where you can choose a calendar. Okay. You're always going to see my calendar, so this is your your login is going to be associated with what's called my calendar. Okay. So I'm going to choose him. Now I'm going to see the stuff that's sideways over here. I'm going to bring it out so you can see it a little bit better. Now, starting at the top and working our way down and across. Now I'm looking at the calendar view, okay? With the times and my calendar. I can look at the same thing in a list form, calendar or list. Coming down, I can look at one day, which is what I'm doing. I can say, now I want to see a five day window, a seven, the entire month. Okay. If you don't need to see the calendar over here, over here in the where, where the mouse is wiggling, just click it, and then that one disappears. Appears or not. Over here on the left hand margin, this is my calendar. If I wanted to see, yeah, my calendar's checked. If I wanted to see Linda's calendar, I would select it. Let's go back to a one calendar view or one day view, I mean, um, this is mine, and this is Linda's calendar. So if you're scheduling, if you're scheduling meetings or appointments, and you need, it's going to involve more than just yourself, then you would undoubtedly uh, want to look at the, uh, at other calendars, okay? Um, take Linda's off. This you may or may not have set up in your system. It depends on how you're using control for automating the production process. Um, I have added um, pieces of equipment so that if you're scheduling, if you want to use control to help you schedule the production process for a particular order, then you can associate that with a particular plotter, a particular printer, a particular laminator, and you would see, I don't think I have any, you would see the calendar for this plotter and there's nothing in it, okay? So you, whether you're using, um, there's the laminator. Now, if a production person is involved, then you would be able to see my calendar and then also monitor the calendars of the different pieces of equipment. The actual process of doing that is a little bit more uh, complicated and is a separate webinar that we've done uh, you know, several different times. So to create an event, 
you can come over here to the action toolbar and choose the downward diamond. These represent the different kinds of activities. I want to send an email. I want to just create a note. I want to uh, um, use one called other, make an appointment or call, do an appointment, schedule a meeting, uh, how to. So let's just pick one of these. These all look very, very much the same. The dialogue here is going to be very much. Here's the type of appointment or the, the appointment type. Here's what I would choose. Um, who all is going to be involved in the appointment other than myself? So if I need to add someone, I would just simply add Linda. This is the type, subtype, reminders, put any kind of description in here that you want. If it's relative to an order, then choose the order that it's for. It's going to identify then who the company is and who the contact is and the uh, uh, information. Type in any of the any notes that you want down here at the bottom. A, an appointment can be scheduled probably for a specific date in a specific time. So I've chosen 310 at 1052. The duration. Um, 15 minutes. It can be set as a recurring um, appointment. Probably more meaningful that that word would be a meeting. Um, it can be a, something that is not going to be relative to a um, particular time. So it could be an all day thing. Um, and it's going to be timeless where you don't pick, pick a time. This one is the bottom radio here is if an item doesn't complete on the day that it was scheduled, like maybe today, then it will roll forward. The system will roll it forward to the uh, to the next day. OK. Um, you can make recurring items. How frequently, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, how many you want to have set up, what dates, that's the start date, and when it's going to end. Now, these are um, items that have not been completed. Okay, here's one that I just added. Up here in the top where it says show completed. I'm showing them, but I don't have any completed on this particular day. So let's just simply mark this one as complete. I did a right mouse click. And um, do this one. These aren't letting me do what I want to do. Let's do this one here. Change activity. I can add, I can change it without adding any notes. I can add notes. Let's just do that one and do it for all calendars. Now it's going to. Uh, this, it shows is completed. So any completed activity has a line through it. If we take the show completed off, then it doesn't show the uh, the complete the completed ones. Um, Paul, I've we do covered, have a question. All right, I've covered what I want, so that's good. Okay, um, this is from Megan, and if you make an appointment reoccurring and save it. How can you undo this action? I've had trouble fixing this in the past. Hmm. So basically, how to undo a reoccurring event.
That is a good one. Um, make reoccurring. Okay, so I need to save it first. Save it. There it is. And make reoccurring. Let's do it. Daily. Wouldn't you just put an end date like today or now? That's that's what I was thinking of. So here's where it would start. And if it was a wow. daily one, just say end, edit it and do an end on whatever date you wanted to stop the activity. That's intuitively okay. what would what would make sense to me. That makes sense. Um, Megan, I unchecked you, uh, unmuted you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Hi. Okay. So uh, I have tried to do that before. The way that our company uses this is when we set up an appointment, um, we actually don't do the schedule it on a certain date and time. We do the second option down, so only on the date. And if you set it to recurring by accident, because for whatever reason, our system will automatically check recurring. If you do that by accident and it puts it on the calendar Monday through Friday, every single day until the end date, and then you try to undo that, it will not allow you to undo that. Even if I'm clicking on the add remove from my calendar, add remove from everyone's calendar, I had to physically go in. I had an appointment set through August by accident. I had to remove it one day at a time. Hmm. So again, you set it up so that it was. Right, only schedule was... the date. So I clicked it there. Our system, if you click on only schedule the date, it um, we did it as make recurring and um, it also rolled over was the other option. It did that rollover if not complete. Okay, you did the rollover? Yeah, because for whatever reason, when we have, when our system is automatically set to always have that box checked. So we have to undo that. So when I saved right. it, as soon as I realized what I had done as a new user, you know, just screwing up, I went back in to try to fix it and it would not let me remove it. I had to delete one day at a time for six months. <laughs> and I tried every way. I asked everyone here and we just could not figure it out. Linda, can that be deferred or the referred to, uh, you know, to protect? Because it, what you described makes all the logical sense in the world to me. Yeah, I would probably refer that to tech. Okay. And see if there's something they, in your system yeah, that needs the, to be unchecked or. Okay. Yeah, yeah, do the support, uh, submit, and do the question. Because um, it certainly should do exactly what you were describing that you wanted to do. Yeah, that's what I thought. It would just do what I'm telling it to do. So, yep. all right. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Any other, any other questions? If not, thanks everybody for attending and hope to see all of you again on Thursday. All right. Thank you. Yeah, take care.